Oh, okay. Oh, so it's recording now. Good. So today, in the same token, uh, we will devote our class to introduction to Kabbalah. If you wish, you can tie it to uh, idolatry, Genesis chapter one, talking about God. L let's talk a little bit about Kabbalah. And uh, this is just an introduction, of course. Uh, what 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 is the meaning of the word Kabbalah? And Kabbalah in Hebrew means uh, rece receiving, receiving. So receiving what? Receiving a tradition from our predecessors. So although Kabbalah is not, you cannot find it in the written text of a Talmud or the Mishnah or the, of course not the Torah. But it's based on on tradition that came from father to son over many, many years, many years. We don't know exactly when, but it's so beautiful and so deep. So it must have been very, very old. Who knows? Maybe part of it is even for Moses. So that's the meaning of the word Kabbalah. People think, think of it about as if it's a esoteric, mystical. It's not. Kabbalah, what Kabbalah deal with is a, a theory of processes. Today, uh, if I were if I were a manager, uh, studying in, in a school of managing uh, uh, companies and so on, so you study processes. In in let's say processes in what processes uh, in in receiving a, a, a decision what what steps should i do to take to take a proper decision so i take a b c d e steps so so that's just an example what we're talking about processes uh, of organization and kabbalah deal with that and it has its own language now the, on, the language is very old, so it come from a generation. So it's Aramaic, and it look mystical, but once you learn it uh, and, and understand it, then uh, it actually talk to you to you right away. It's like very seem, seem like very modern. So that's the Kabbalah. There is a another meaning of the Kabbalah. Will probably. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll mention it right now. Kabbalah is not just a rece receiving from father to mother, but some people call, uh, 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 describe it as the art of give and take, a deal. Um, a deal, a, a solid deal, is based on proper a dual relationship. So instance, if I shower on you just a love or endless love without receiving anything in return, I will destroy you. I will destroy the, res the receiver. So it must be a Kabbalah deal with a proper way of relating to other people in in a sense of a give and take or the art of giving and taking. It will, as you learn it, you you will you will see what I mean. So that's also uh, another meaning of the word Kabbalah. Kabbalah receive not only a tradition, but tradition of giving and receive, receiving and receiving. So let, but let's say to as to start with the, our class today, let's focus. Let's say on on a Torah. So the Torah starts, of course, with Genesis chapter 1. It tells us uh, the name of God, the attribute, the six days, Adam creation. Give us a lot of information. Elohim is the attribute of judge, judgment. YHVH describes the merciful one. So we know, you know it. And that's given to you 
as a fact. As the end product of a process that probably happened before. The Torah doesn't tell you uh, a book, uh, it's all tell you about the attribute of God. For instance, uh, Elohim is just an attribute of the infinite God. God. Merciful one is an attribute. But what about God himself? And what about thing, how, how, how uh, what's the relationship between the attribute and God himself? So the Torah does not deal with it. And it deals only with the end product. I give you, this is a Torah, you have the Torah in your hand, uh, you read it, you understand a little bit about creation, and I give you order, tell you what to do, what not to do, the end product. But what what is the purpose of all that? What was, the, what was on God's mind when he did it? So here I'm, I'm helping myself when you, and you I'm using a book published uh, maybe 15 years ago in, in Israel called Yedid Nefesh. Uh, is a, I would say, it's a Kabbalistic term, Yedid Nefesh. It's a soulmate. Soulmate, I would say. Soulmate. It's part, it's part of a, a Kabbalistic song. And he wrote, uh, he, he, he translated the entire Zohar to his book. And he, go, he writes uh, a beautiful introduction to Kabbalah. So I, I use that uh, to, to introduce you to Kabbalah. I think he's very smart, this Yemenite boy who wrote it many years ago. He was a boy when he wrote it. And he still lives, I think, in, in Bnei Brak. So uh, what so you talk about you talk about end the product, the Torah as the end product. And it give you an example. When you want to buy to purchase a car, we are used to it. We we always look at the end product. We don't care about what are the processes that led to the to the product to the to the product that we purchase, uh, a car. When I enter the showroom, I'm not interested at all to the processes that they brought, that uh, a Honda company uh, was uh, was indulging in for the last uh, so, so many years to produce that car. I just, as a, as a consumer, I am only interested in the color, of the speed, if it please my wife, and so on. Uh, but uh, I'm not, uh, I, it's far for me to think about uh, uh, what was exactly on the mind of the uh, company, the person who established the company, let's say. What was his motives? What, why, why, why did he start Honda? And what, what was the purpose of, of uh, of a, of the whole endeavor, and what is, and uh, probably had many options, but why did he decide to do this and not that? And what are the and the other step that so many steps that the company took to produce that car? Uh, the different uh, uh, part, a, a part of it, it probably made by different companies all over the world. And somebody had to connect them all together to put it up. And if had I asked uh, each of the participants in the production, what are you doing? Do you have any idea what the car would be? No. They don't care about only the hood. They don't care about the battery. Uh, they don't have any idea how the shape of the car is, what and so on. So, uh, so that's an example how we we are into that we are interested in our daily life in our culture only in an end product because this is what interests us as a customer unless i'm i'm i want to enjoy maybe more if i have time and i go to detail and i open up some journals and i read about the honda company but very little very few people will do that 
So here's a, this is what he write uh, we did in Nefesh, that uh, this is how uh, the, we re should relate to the Torah. The Torah is end product. Okay, we have attribute. Hashem, we have Elohim, we have a merciful one, and we have a creation of Adam. But uh, what, what, what was there before? What brought this Torah? What was on the, on, the, on, the, on the creator mind? And who is the creator, by the way? It's concealed from us. Even the Torah doesn't speak about him. Only the attribute. So you got the idea. And, and the, uh, so the Kabbalah actually is uh, that uh, tradition that deal with that past before the Torah. Uh, that passed that led to the Torah in a higher level. Who is the creator? What brought him down? What brought him to, to create the universe and to create us? And, and, and that's, uh, um, so that's actually um, uh, the, the, <clears throat> the, uh, I said the, uh, the, the uh, interest of the Kabbalah. So, what was it, what would be the first question the Kabbalah asked? Like the car, uh, the Kabbalah would ask, "Who, who, who actually uh, uh, created the universe?" Oh, you tell me Elohim and uh, merciful one. No, no, no. I'm sorry. This is attribute. Who who is God and what 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 brought him what caused him to 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 create this universe? So first of all, uh, uh, the Kabbalah says uh, the very question: Who who is God? Who uh, who is? Uh, uh, before we even try to answer the question, we need to understand that God is infinite. Infinite, and his will is infinite. He can will, he can desire many things, infinite things he can do. And he himself is infinite; has no name. The moment you put a name on him, uh, that already confining him. So the the number one probably posture or statement of of Kabbalah would be, uh, boy, make before you go into death. Make sure you understand that God is infinite and his mind is infinite above your mind. And there are things that you will never know because you are flesh and blood and you will never understand for real what, what he did, he, what he understands or what he wants. Yet, he created, in, he created the universe in a way that we will understand it. So the first thing that came up, that started the universe, Kabbalah says, so first of all, you need to understand he is infinite. Then he shrunk, he, he shrunk his infinite capacity, so to speak, and, 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 and had a desire on his mind. He can be without desire. He doesn't have to be he doesn't have to have any desire to do anything. Nobody compel him to do anything. But uh, it, the world universe started with a will. It's on the start supreme will. The primordial will. By the way, if you ask yourself to whom should we pray? Uh, the book of Leviticus says this explicitly, when you offer sacrifice to God, you aim it to his will. So you should never address God, uh, you are Elohim, or you are pray to Elohim. You don't pray to attribute. You pray to the infinite and, and to his, you, you aim at his will. And maybe, maybe, maybe your prayer will change his will. 
So will his will, his desire is the first thing that came on his mind, so to speak, to start our universe. Now, before I move on, I want to show to to tell you how difficult the concept is. Uh, most scientists today, most philosophers today, argue with it. They would say uh, the universe is at random. That's the common thinking of today. Most scientists and and uh, and secular actually uh, people anywhere. I don't believe they say that uh, God, that the creator, the universe has any purpose. It, it, how, how it can be at random? How the how evolution came up to be at random, by chance, by natural selection, by adaptation, at random. This is 19th century belief that spell into the 20 and now in our days and that posture is completely uh, 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 completely destroyed I would say or more by new new evidence by science, new scientists that come up with a with a, what with the they, they learn that it's not so you, our universe, is shown it says the structure of the universe, the distribution of matter, and the whole history of the universe, and our presence in our little planet here, uh, it all shows that everything is beyond chance. I have a beautiful book by Myers. Uh, the th it's called God Your Theory, or God the uh, Oh, it's called uh, God, the um, God factor. So you, uh, without without the presence of, of he doesn't he is careful. He's not mentioning God, but he says without in, intelligence, without a purpose, you cannot explain the universe. I don't want to dwell a bit in it too much, but that's as we talk about the primary will. So Kabbalah says otherwise. Kabbalah says that the universe was created with a purpose. Ratzon, in evil. So what was this uh, Ratzon? We still don't know. Um, and who, who started it? The infinite creator. So the Ratzon, the will brought, caused the, the, the thinking how to create the universe, Machshava, mental process as we call it, Machshava thinking, which led to function, to the creator, to creation. So Kabbalah says, just look, our universe is built in, in, in such a way that if you if you men, if you, if we want to do anything, we first of all need to to have an idea, spark a will, a will should we won't do anything without 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 having a will to do. And then we need to translate it to thinking how to how to execute it mental process, and then finally we do it. Nothing that can be do in life is doesn't follow that platform. It's embedded in our mind, and Kabbalah says it's not incidental. It comes from the Creator. The Creator the, created the universe in such a way. He created it with a will, then he had a thought, thinking how to do it, and then he finally uh, did it. Now, the, uh, we, so what I did, if you no notice what I just done, I first observed myself, 
that we do it in such a way, and then I translated it to God. I went for myself to God and I said, if I do it, everything I do need, I want to, to eat, to cook uh, uh, fish. So I need to first have a desire to have it. Then I have to think about how to cook it. Then I cook it. So, and everything I do follow the same platform. From here, I went up to, and I, I projected my, my, my doing to God. Is it right? Many times people attack me, attack me when I talk. And I said, how, how do you know about God, you know? And the Kabbalah says, Kabbalah says, of course, God does is not confined to that platform. God, God also uh, is shrunk himself, constricted himself to create his universe in this, in, the, in this fashion and to create us because he has a purpose, he has a plan. So he, he limited himself to do this in this fashion. Will, willing, first will and then thinking and then doing. Uh, so it is, he, he confined, he created the universe in this way. He operated in this way. And we, we are built to, to, to perform in this way. And by the way, this is what we mean, that God, Adam, is an image of God. The Torah says that Adam is image of God. So, so that's very... One of the explanations of that statement is what I just said. Adam is is an image because we follow the same platform of doing, of willing, thinking, doing, and as as he does. And it's not incidental because it has a purpose. So don't tell me that God is had no choice but to do to for, to to function this way. Of course, he could he could create universe any any other way, but he, in his will, in his desire, in his wisdom, he decided to to this universe to create us as opposed to other universes to create this universe in this fashion. Uh, I remember Kant when I read about Kant; he was amazed how our mind is structured in such a way that uh, as if we have boxes in our mind pre-designed to understand nature, to write mathematical formula to describe uh, mechanics. And it's it's beautiful. It's a, we, our mind operates to understand nature. And he was amazed. He couldn't explain it. Of course, you cannot explain it unless you, un you understand that God did it on, on purpose. He built us and the universe in the same wisdom, in the same platform. He didn't have to do it. He's not confined to do it. But he, that's what he did. We'll see in a minute why. So we talk about his will. We pray to our will, to his will that can, can change. Because will is also not only how to build the universe, but uh, how to conduct, how to run it, how to run our life. So now, uh, how? Let's move on to the second. We can talk about the will a lot, but let's move on to the second step. We said will, thinking, and and acting. So thinking that how to how he has a will, he has a purpose. We didn't have, we, we haven't discussed yet the purpose, but to to implement his purpose, to, to he has to function he, he function along a certain take certain steps. If you go if you go to our car, on the car, so of course. He, uh, the car uh, on the car has many purposes. It can be sport car, 
It can be uh, a walking car, truck. It can be pleasant, a car that uh, just serves serve my wife to go to, to shopping. So it's uh, many purposes. And, and, and Konda will cater or build a car according to different purposes. So the one donor has to think about the purpose, okay, and to before we uh, and to plan to plan how to execute how to how to build how to build uh, different cars in, in, into different purposes. So it will split to different uh, 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 wings. Uh, different plans and maybe different uh, uh, managers and each one will cater to its own task. So it's very important to, in construction of a company to decide uh, not only the purpose of building car, but now how, they, how to produce it in a very efficient way and to she and to stream all that in, all that activity into the final product. The same way the Kabbalah says uh, uh, is is happening here with the Creator. What was the purpose of 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 the cre of creation of the world? Like what was the purpose of the car? So look at the end product. The end product is Adam. So from, from Adam, you understand that uh, the, the whole endeavor is was shipped, was streamed towards creating the Adam. What is Adam's task in the world? To stand judgment. Stand judgment. So the infinite God, infinite creator, deciding to create a universe where Adam will stand judgment. So he split his own capacity, own will, own, own, own uh, kingdom, own kingship, own power. He split it to different wings called sphere. Kabbalah call it sphere. Ten spheres. So the ten, the ten spheres, famous sphere of Kabbalah, is nothing else but the way, the way the infinite creator want to establish an heavenly court. The universe was created by, by the supreme will, where the supreme will Decided big off it decided on its own. Nobody compelled the Supreme Will to do it. But there may be any other universe didn't have that, that kind of uh, judgment. But this universe, the Supreme Will uh, decided to show up to conduct the universe as heavenly court. Heavenly court has a prosecutor, has a defense, has witnesses. As, a, as judge, judges, as the police, as other people. So it's a very complex, a very complex issue, having a court. And having a court has a prosecutor, Elohim, as a, the attribute of just judgment, and the defense is a, the merciful attribute of YHVH, for instance. But there are many others. Altogether, 10 attributes, 10 classical spheres, all of them connected to judgment. There is a hierarchy. So, well, again, what are the spheres? The spheres are nothing else but the, the, the same, the, the, the creator 
conduct, uh, decided to kind of split himself, or divide himself to, to different capacities in order to establish a heavenly court that as much as we can, as human beings can understand it. And the spheres, there is no difference between the holiness of the infinite creator and the spheres. They are all, uh, people use it, eminence, all kind of uh, terms. Uh, it's, it's the same thing as a creator, but it's, it's split into, into different capacities. They are not different gods. They are different capacities of the same god, and that's one of the meaning of oneness. And there is a hierarchy. One is more important than the others. Now, talking about uh, the hierarchy, or talking about the heavenly court, how does the heavenly, how does the court function? Human court, as I said, by no incidence, we follow the same, the same platform as the heavenly court. Anything we do is a copying God. Uh, United States government has a Congress, has a parties in it, they debate the case, and then somebody decide, they vote. And then somebody execute the, the decision, the president. And it's not incidental that uh, they, have any, they have any court and the United States Congress and any, any court uh, and even our own individual setting of our own soul structure in our mind, you know, each one of us is a little one, is a little court on its own. And I explain to you what I mean. So it's all the same. People use that, that concept to de 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 generate the Torah. They say, oh, oh, you just copied, you copied what we do, and you think God is doing, confined, doing the same thing that we do? They don't understand it's the other way around. We do it like this because God decided that we will do it like this. So we copy it, we, co we copy God. So, and God intentionally because, uh, did it because he created the universe in such a way that we will stand in trial. So, how, what is the structure of the heavenly, of the court? It goes to uh, Tenth commandment, number one. It says, I am, line number one. Line number two, Hashem your Elohim, the attribute, who took you out of Egypt. Here is God presenting himself in three line. I am, which means there is a self, there is I am. Self-conscious, I, and then number two is attribute of Shem Elohim, and number three is what I do, kingship. So it's like a, a, in, in the Congress, I would say the I am is a is a, the the one who who who's a real real owner of the Congress is the United is the American people, and the Congress is as two parties debating, like Hashem Elohim, he was debating. Finally, the, 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 the decision is a final a turn down or sent down to the president to execute. Mm. So the I am in that, in, in, in commandment number one, is certainly above the attribute, okay? So again, we are looking to, to understand who is the, 
who is above the attribute? Who is this infinite creator? Here in, in Ten Commandments, he says, call himself I, I am. Now, the I has no name. Even, even you, to human being. People call me, but that's not myself. When I by myself, the I, the I being me, uh, you cannot describe it by any name. Name is only what separate me from other people. They have to call me, but it doesn't describe what I am. So of course the I is a higher, higher than the attribute. So the rabbi said, when we pray to God, we should follow the number, the, the commandment number one. We call we we, we bless on the, on the food. We say bless you, bless our uh, thou you. We refer to I I am bless our thou, Hashem Elokim, number two. Who brought for, for, uh, the king of the universe? Number three kingship. Who brought uh, bread water bread from the ground? So all, all our blessing are, are following this platform of commandment number one. But, but returning to our topic, the question is, who is above the attribute? Chapter Genesis 1 started with the attribute. So who is the one? We just said the infinite. Okay, the infinite. And now I understand there is a, one, one more, more, more a item or level above the attribute is the self. Is the self identified with the infinite? No. There are still other hidden steps between the infinite and, and the self, Kabbalah says. And that's why when you open a Kabbalah book, you may find a description of different steps between the infinite and even the self. One, uh, and is describing in a shrinking in derivative, one is derived from the other and going down from the very infinite to the concept of self. So the Kabbalah goes so deeply that even, even to that level it, uh, they describe. It's not belong to indulge in that right now. Okay, so uh, remember when I when I when I when I want to change the will of God, I pray. Uh, when I bless, when I when I just simple blessing or simple prayer, I actually use the the self. I pray. Uh, the, the the sacrifice is is. Is the is gain is is a, uh, is aimed at the supreme will, which is above the, the self. Okay, it's a lot of uh, uh, philosophical impl implication here. It's enough for us just to understand that point. Now. So we, let's go to the spheres. So the, where do you put the spheres? The spheres are at the level of uh, at the level of uh, of uh, still thinking. You know, remember thinking. There is a desire. There is thinking how to implement it, and the, finally the action. So the sphere in that level of thinking, it still carry the same holiness of God Himself. And there are ten spheres. Most of them are are doing with the, with the, the judgment, attribute of mercy, attribute of judgment, shaddai, and all all kind of names. Total ten. So out of the ten, three stand out. Uh, they are what? What is? How do they stand out? 
whereas all the attributes are, de are describing emotional feeling, emotional stance. There are three attributes who, do, who, who describe a mental, a, a mind, as if the God has in his mind when, when uh, wisdom to 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 execute to function as a heavenly court. Okay, to function as a heavenly court, you don't need to have only passion as a as a as a compassion. Not only to be harsh as judge, not only to to uh, to to find it to find the verdict, but the self find the end uh, the verdict and send it up to the kingship. Not only that, but to, uh, to do all that with wisdom. And the wisdom is Chochma Bina Dat, three level. Chochma is theoretical wisdom. Da, uh, Bina is detail. Dat is really implemented on the ground. The fine so so the three, the three level of Chochmah bin Adad Chabad is part of the of they belong to the world of spheres and they describe the way the heavenly court execute or find this is verdict. Remember everything we find talk about God as connection to us. We should function the same way. We are the image of God, so we do function in this way. What is a tree of life? Uh, what is a tree of uh, knowledge of good and evil in Eden? Just to show you an example, what I'm talking about. Uh, before the scene, uh, they knew evil only theoretical. Chochmah that in theoretical way. But after eating the fruit, the fruit is called the knowledge that of evil. So the, 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 the fruit gave him the practical knowledge of evil. Why? Simply because they were driven out to face the heaven, the real, real, real evil on earth. So Chochmah bin Adat. So as we as you come across in reading Chabad, and you find those terms, uh, then you know okay Chabad is is part of the spheres three major spheres spheres that the Creator so to speak have on his mind rather than than, than on his heart. It's very simple. So so uh, let's say we go back to the company. On the company, it's not only, oh no, I, we, the, the, the car is, should not only be constructed to, to be efficient and, and a per perfect material and so on, but the designer have to have to be wise to understand the circumstances, theoretical and, and, and practical. Uh, it has a lot of wisdom in it. How it's function and how to relate to 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 the users and so on. so it's not so that's in a simple way what Chabad is. Is that a part of the building that demand wisdom in detail, knowledge of reality? Otherwise, the car nobody will buy it. It will be a failure. So part of the Chabad is God understanding what we need, what, what we need, okay? As the uh, Honda manager, or Honda, uh, Honda uh, the, uh, uh, engineers need to understand the consumer needs and to be attuned to them, to be wise, to understand So the wisdom mental wisdom, in addition to, to other part of wisdom. 
Okay. Now, if we talk about the purpose, going back to the question, we still we still have an answer. It. What is the purpose of creating the universe? So we said men so men can withstand a trial. So uh, if I look at the car and I ask and, and ask what is the purpose of the, what is the purpose of building the car? And you and somebody will say, Oh, we build the car that you will enjoy looking at it. Uh, uh, you build a car, a beautiful car. It meets all the requirement. It's wise, smart, and so on. And that's the purpose of the car. To please the, the person who own it. If you tell me that, you got the whole thing wrong. The, the owner company didn't make the car to please me. They made the car to what? That I will purchase it. That I will purchase it with my money. And the money goes to them. And they will make some money. So much that even, even if I pay just the expenses, the company will balk, will go bankrupt. So here is a cycle of give and take. Uh, in a car, we understand that uh, uh, the whole endeavor wouldn't, wouldn't last for a minute if there wouldn't be a, a closed cycle of I produce the car, you buy it, and you uh, you pay me back my money with, with some, some uh, uh, earning. I must give it back. If if the if the cycle is interrupted, uh, the car won't be here. I must give it back. If I if you tell me that God just made the so what did what did God gain? By by making putting me on earth, I I ask many people, well, what what do you think we need? To, how can we? What should we pay back to God in order to have the cycle closed? Because Kabbalah says the cycle must be completed, otherwise it will fall apart. I must pay something back to God. Okay. So the answer is numerous. And some say, oh, you need to fear him, but you need to fear God. Because Moses says, all, all in, in the Deuteronomy, I think, all what God is asking you is to fear him. Well, I would say, uh, God says, he's asking me to fear him for my benefit. He doesn't need me to, he doesn't need my fear. He didn't create the universe so I can fear him. It's a joke. It could be, uh, that, 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 I, I, it cannot be that the whole universe is just created so I can fear him. Oh, so I can give him thanks. Well, it's nice to give him God thanks, but he he, he did he really deserve. He really uh, took all his power and uh, endeavor to create the universe just that I can thank him. So what is the? Uh, by the way, do you have any idea? I, I open the question. If any, can anybody say? Why did God create the universe? 
What can, how can I pay back to God in order to close the give and take cycle? I would say, Sandy, do you have any idea? What would you suggest? 